If we come by the word of God, your conscience will be clear. So your faith will grow easy to receive. Because what you need now is the word of God in your spirit. I want to tell you what happens when you hear the word of God. Can I tell you what happened? It enters here. The word of God. It enters here. And goes straight to your heart. Your heart, your soul. Not your 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 soul. It heart, your soul. It goes straight to your soul. And your soul, your soul is can eat food. Your soul, it eat words. Your soul doesn't eat what food. It eat what words. That is why, when you are given a, a word of doubt, your soul takes it. And from there, whatever you do now. You don't know what you are doing now. You are double-minded. So now if you've, you take the word of God in your, in your soul, what happens? Your soul begins to be strengthened. When your soul begins to be strengthened, you know your soul uh, represents the one who created you. When Jesus said, a man cannot live by what? By food alone, but by the what? By the weight. He was referring to the soul. He was referring to our soul. Our soul eat the weight. It's possible that you find that you have got a big body, but your soul is malnutriated. It's weak. But your soul is dead. In the things of the spirit, it's possible that you find that it, even when you want to do things in the spirit, you find that it is the flesh that is having power because your soul is very weak. It's captured. So when you are eating the word, eating the word, eating the word, your soul grow to be like him. Your soul began to have the likeness of God. In other words, when Satan look at you, he says, ah, this is Jesus. It's no longer looking at you in the flesh. When Paul said for me to live is Christ, he will say that he benefited his soul more than things around. So if he die, his soul will go to heaven. So our soul is so important that sometimes you must fast for the sake of your soul. Not because you want something, but for the sake of what? Of your soul. Our Christianity is based on the flesh, how to get a car, how to get a house. How to, your soul can drive a car. And your soul does not need a house because your soul can pass through the wall. I want to tell you about your soul. Your soul can pass through the wall. Do you know that the day you die, you don't catch fire when you reach to hell. You catch fire sometimes. Where you are, the moment you get out from your body, your soul will catch fire of, of where you're going. Maybe we need to preach one day about, about your soul and the word. Soul and the word. And we forget about mayonnaise, beetroot, and others.
Because all these things here, if you want to see, they are not good for you. Just take them outside of the fridge and put them where there is a sun. For two days, you'll be very much surprised. And those are the things we are crying for. We put them in our stomach. After we put them, we walk better than the one who has not eaten them. We need to know the importance of what? Of our soul. That why, if you die, we have to bury you the way we look at you. And the one inside you is no more there. It's no more there. Why? Because your soul needs the weight, the weight, the weight. And that weight will strengthen your soul. Are you hearing me? That word will do what? Strengthen your soul and you begin to look like the one who created you. You know the Bible says all the creations are waiting for it. For you, for your soul to be more stronger than your flesh so that you'll be able to do what Jesus did. The reason why the Pharisees killed Jesus was because of their bellies. It was because of what? Their bellies. Even today, our prayers are based focusing way. Bellies, not our soul. Look at how small the stomach is. That confuses a person to lose his soul. We need the word of God in our in our soul, in our spirit. Once we have that word of God, sleeping, eating, drinking. We will we'll see them that they are useless. We will see them and that they are useless. I sleep on this mattress. Did you check inside of the mattress? I drive this car. Who make that car? I stay in this house. Your soul does not need that. Your soul does not need those things. Your soul needs the word of God. If we can be Christians, that will stay in the word of God. Thinking about the word, reading the word, pray the word. I'm telling you, we will have the likeness of God in us. That's where when we will be saying, let there be light and the light will come. Pastors, we don't need many church people in our churches. We need the word of God in our soul. Don't leave people. Leave those who are rejecting you. Leave everything. People, you don't need money. You need the word of God way. In your soul. Seek the kingdom. All shall follow. If you maintain yourself in the spirit in the kingdom you will never suffer because even the challenge you will face you will know why you are facing it they have to be your spirit like of him and the spirit of God in you will tell you that God is your father and from there what will happen it will be easy for you even to know tomorrow what will happen. What about the mere challenge of this rand, dollar, and pound? It's what the world are crying for. I'm praying that today we see the importance of what? Of our soul. Your soul does not need money. Some of you now, your cell phone is so important than you, than the word of God. 
Look at your cell phone here, how you open it. But how many times you open the Bible? For your soul. Can you see why we are lacking revelation today? Huh? It's because we are neglecting what is important and we are focusing on what is useless. That's why we fight one another. Because of our bellies. We fight to defend ourselves. And we forget what one day what we are fighting for will live here. Think about the day when you find that what you are fighting for, the house, the car, the ego, the pride. When you reach before God, you find it's only your soul. You must remember the scripture that says, you fool. When God says, you fool, your soul is what is required. After I began to after I get revelation and I was taught to teach about the kingdom and be readiness of the kingdom, I'm telling you, I have never worried about something called money. Because these are the things that will give you headache, will give you what? I always tell Mama, Mama, you get money. You're going to get money. Our focus today is what? Huh? It's our belly. When you see someone preaching, it's because of what? Huh? Belly. No, when you see some people talking in tongues, it's not because of the spirit, it's because of what? It's food, it's beetroot. You see someone preaching, shouting, shouting. It's called drink. It's not Holy Spirit. Things that are very useless that we live here. Today we are busy calling ourselves what we are not. Why? Because of food. We forget what our soul. You know, Jesus said, our yoke is easy. You know, he was referring to knowledge. That this is a very simple way to follow. But we are bringing attachments. We are making the gospel to be more difficult. So much difficult now. That we end up neglecting the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel is the revelation that you have found. Concerning what? Jesus and your soul. Only that, only that. Jesus, your soul. Jesus, accept Jesus for the sake of your soul. Accept Jesus, only that. That is gospel for you. But today we teach people how to smile, how to become rich, how to become rich, or to be multimillionaire in the church. And the soul, and after that accident comes, what are you going to say before God? Today I'm going to teach you how to hear God. How to hear God. You're not supposed to be hearing about that. If your soul is okay with God, God will speak. Amen. There are some topics which are very much useless that we are teaching today. And you people must forgive us. We taught you many things. How to speak in tongues. Automatically when your soul is right with God and you are staying the way, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right now, what are you doing now? Going up and down, you want to be filled, you want to be filled. Amen. You want to be filled. And this is the promise that the Bible says you have been given. In the word of God, not to search for it. How can you search for the promise? How can you search for the promise? It's as good as now I'm coming to tell you that, you know what, month end, I'm going to buy you a car. You go around searching to every garage a car. You forget me who said, I'll buy you a car. You were supposed to be focusing on me who said, I'll buy you a car. You we're supposed to be focusing in God today.
Can you see now what is happening to all of us today? Our focus has been shifted. Why? Beetroot. Rice. It's not because of the Holy Spirit. It's because of what? Beetroot. Mayonnaise. Carrots. Whatever. Our soul here is crying. Crying. Even today, we don't know why we are here in the church. If we can ask you why you are here in the church, can I tell you this? The more the challenges, challenges are there to refine your soul. I want to tell you that. Challenges are there to refine what? Your soul, so that you know whom you are seeking. Challenges are not there so that you pray against them. No. You don't need to pray against them. Do you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do you remember what they said? They say, oh king, you promoted us and you put us to where we are today. But our God will save us. But king, there's this statement we want to give you. Even if he won't save us, he's still our God. If God doesn't answer us today, is he still your God? Because your focus now is what? Is those things that must follow you, things you are supposed to be given for free. Those are the things that you don't you spend the sleepless nights counting, even with your finger like this. Like this. Whereas you were supposed to be taking the Bible and say what it says about my situation, what the Bible says. Because that word of God, when you are meditating it, you remember what happened to Joshua? Meditate it day and night. It will make your way what? You'll prosper. Because the moment you take the word of God to your spirit, I will tell you something that before I preach here. You need to go and reason about it. Everybody who doesn't have the word of God, does he know himself? I'll tell you that. Everybody who doesn't have the word of God in himself, he doesn't know himself. So if you don't know yourself, how will you pray? If you don't know yourself, how will you pray? What we are supposed to be searching first is to take the word of God, take it to our soul until we identify who are we in the spirit so we will know what we need to ask from God. Because what you are asking from God, maybe it's not supposed to be coming to you. You might be praying for things that God wants to give to someone. Because you don't know yourself. You, you want to be like Makaranisa. You are praying to be like Makaranisa. And whereas it is your portion, you are supposed to be finding yourself when the word of God enters your spirit. I don't know if you're hearing me. And from there, the word of God will reveal who you are. The moment when you identify yourself, you'll be able to know what to pray to God. Today, we don't even know what to pray. You want business because you saw someone doing business. But the question is, are you a businessman? You are searching for a job. Because you saw some people working. What if you're supposed to do business? The reason is, there's no word of God in you that can make you to find who you are in the things of the spirit. Therefore, you have to pray prayers of other people. I mean, today, the reason why you are fighting each other is because, I mean, you, you don't know yourself. You have not found who you are. If you find who you are, you will never compete. You will never fight anyone. I don't know if you hear me. Tell them, if you find who you are, you will never compete and you will never fight anyone. Can you see now when you sit down and talk about other people? It's because you don't know yourself. If you know yourself, you begin to say, oh, 
Okay, I found myself. I know why I'm here on earth. And you're not here forever. You're not here forever. You're not, tell you, you're not here forever. Stop wasting your time by searching things which are useless. That are going to keep your time and remove you from the focus of God. Today, we are here. What is important today? It's no longer your soul. If I can get money, if I can do this, if I can, if I can do that, our lives are full of ifs. The promises of God in Christ are yes and what? Amen. But today we are if, if, if I can, if, if, as if this God, we don't know him. We make this God a liar. Even what he has promised, he will never come. That's why we say, if, if I can be pregnant, if, if I can be, if I can get money, I'll do business. If I can, I can, if I can get RDP, oh my God. You know why? Because you are looking at your life by the challenges you are facing, not by the word of God. Tell you you are looking at your life by the challenges you are facing, not by the word of God. If you are looking at your life by the word of God, when the challenges come, you will know where to go. When God wants to reshape your life and make you big, he allows your challenges to come your way. Rejection, tribulation, whatever. When they come to you, to shake you. You know, I was asking myself, if I didn't mean challenges, I could not be the way I am today. If I didn't mean these challenges that I, I could not be where, I mean, where I am today. If you want things the way others want them, you are bound to be ordinary. The word of God makes you to live a supernatural life. I'm praying today that God will help you to see life the way God wants you to see in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You know, <laughs> listen to this. I've been observing, sometimes I ask myself, what, what is happening with us? If we read the Bible, we'll understand why all these things that are happening now, we'll understand that. <laughs> Can you see? If you didn't have this challenge, you're not supposed to be here, isn't it? That's how we go to church. That's how we go to church. A church today is a place of solving challenges. It's no longer a place of fellowship. It's a place where we go now. We want to be told, you are going to get a job. Amen. If someone doesn't tell you, you don't believe it. Some of you here, you are sitting here. Hey, oh, this man of God must speak with me. Must speak with me. When are you going to speak with God? Because you are going to stand alone before God like this. What are you going to say? This man of God must speak with me. If he doesn't speak, it means he's not a man of God. Are you a Christian? Why are you insulting us? Yeah, we are focusing on ourselves. If, if this man does not speak with me, he's not a man of God. Eh? Eh? So you, you have to go around churches. All churches, you must go around questioning if these people are men of God. And then whereas you have the Bible, you don't even open that Bible. But your phone is 24 hours. If the message enters past one, you wake up like you are, someone is chasing you. You want to check who's, what is happening. When you see that, 
is people of death, you say, oh God. You go back to sleep. Your expectations are on things than him. Your focus is on the things of the world. Can you see why we are like this today? Can you see our lives today? Our lives, this is not Christianity. This is not Christianity. In South Africa, we are very easily to be robbed. Because we don't read the Bible also. We don't read the Bible. We don't even read the Bible. Somebody can just think, oh, these people here, all right, okay, they want power, or they want jobs. Okay, let me burn candles. Burn candles, I say, well, come one by one. Do your hands like this, you do like this. And burn candles to your foot. Go, you have fire. Go, you have fire. I mean, someone can just do anything. Someone can do anything now, because even if you don't read the Bible, another one can just say, if I clap you, you are blessed. Pia! Another will come and climb you. Because you don't believe the word. You don't believe the word now. Someone will just say, if I climb you from here, and if you reach there, you are blessed. Another one says, okay. Come here. Come. Okay. Fall down now. <laughs> you fall down because you want things. And you forget that you don't have balance. And the one who says fall down, he doesn't want to fall. You're not minding about your soul. You know why you are being deceived? Your focus is on things. And some people are still going to deceive you. And you are still going to deceive others. The reason why you are not minding about your soul is you are trying to put your life in a level where you want people to understand it. And you forget that it's only God who put you here. You are not living for people. If you die here, after two weeks we will forget you. But here you are living for people. Here. You are living for people. A brother will just tell you, I love you so much, you are like a, you are like a flammer chain. The moment when you just agree, even when God says, stop this thing, you, you are not minding about your soul, you will be thinking about the brother. And this brother, he has been not telling you only, he has been telling other people. You are number seven. You are like Flamma Chief. You are like a Rolls Royce. You are like Bentley. You look like a tree. <laughs> and you agree, you are, this, those words are destroying you. You forget you are created wonderfully, fearfully made by what? By God. You are so cheap. You are cheap. Alduri. Someone just come to you, I love you. You are like, oh, but but Alduri. The person can come to you and say, I want to marry you. Can we see your pastor? Can we see your parent? Someone just come, I I love you. You look like a flame machine. From there you change how you walk. You want to shake everything. <laughs> you forget about your soul. You are so cheap. If you are a child of God, created in the image of God, you will never play with yourself. If come Hana Ayorata o Mwe. If come Hana Ayorata o Mwe. Ukaru wa re pa biyano. Ukaru wa re pa biyano. 
If come hand, I'll write our own way. If come hand, write our own way. If come, what are you doing? The word of God, what it says, the word of God here. Yeah. 